ground to hear more about their search for a new manager. Andy Burton's there. Andy. Yes, thank you very much. Welcome to the Charlton Athletic Training Ground, which has been a hive of activity this morning, as you can imagine, with the news last night around about 7 p.m. yesterday that Ian Dowie had parted company uh, with the club. Les Reid has since been appointed. The club have confirmed that this morning in a statement and to discuss exactly what's gone on here in the last 24 hours or possibly the last two weeks. The Charlton Athletic Chief Executive Peter Varney is here. Peter, why have you done what you've done? Well, I think if you look at the table, obviously, we've got eight points from 12 games, so you know we're in a serious state at the bottom of the Premiership, and results is a factor. But more so than that, um, and with Ian's knowledge over the last two weeks, we've reviewed the whole football management structure and elements of how all aspects of the club are being run here at the training ground. We did that in an open and transparent way. We've met a whole range of staff and had a wide range in discussion. Um, and at the end of that, we felt in the best interest of the club that uh, nothing was going to change. Uh, and therefore we had to do something, we had to act to, to try and remedy the situation and that's why we've terminated Ian's contract. If Ian Dow was good enough in the summer when you appointed him just five months ago, why is he not good enough now? Yeah, well, you have to, you have to realise that when you appoint somebody in the summer, that's based on an interview process. We think we've backed him to the hilt, both in terms of the 11 million we've given. We've got the biggest wage budget this club's ever had in, in its history. Um, off the field, I think we've backed him tremendously in terms of his court case. So he's had full backing here, but we have to take a step back when we're, in, when we're in the position we are, look at every aspect of what's going on here and saying, do we feel that with it carrying on as it, as it is, it will improve, it will stay the same. We felt it would stay the same, that we therefore have an obligation to our fans and everybody connected with this club to do something about it. And people can say, well, 12 games is too early, but if that's what we feel, we have to change. And I think our track record in how we've, you know, Richard Murray and his directors have operated here, you know, there's been stability here for as long as I've been here. Alan was here for 15 years and it wasn't all plain sailing. We were relegated in that time and we had some really difficult times. So we don't take decisions like this lightly but we have, if we have to act because we feel it's in the best interest of the club then, then we will despite what anybody in the media may say. It's not just the media your own fans were emailing Sky Sports News last night and saying 12 games isn't enough many of them were, were voicing I guess a backlash against the board for, for what they've decided today what do you think about that? Well with the greatest respect everybody of course is entitled to their opinion but what I'd say to them is that they have to trust us that we've been here a long long time we haven't just arrived here at the club and I think they know you know what Richard Murray and his, and his fellow directors are like they know how the club is run I think they know that the board would not take hasty decisions if it didn't feel that it was in the best interest of the club. This is not a panic measure, it is a cold considered look at what is going on here and whether or not we feel if we carried on as we are that we would get out of the mess we're in. We didn't and therefore we've acted. In a statement today you've said that Les Reid has become head coach, is that a permanent move? Are you still looking for somebody new to come in? No, Les Reid and Mark uh, Robson will step up um, and run the team and we are probably looking for a third person to come in and help them and we obviously feel that we need stability more than ever. We feel that they're both Charlton people, they've got strong Charlton pedigree and we're very, very confident that, um, that you know they will start to turn this club around. Does Les, Les Reid have the experience to manage at this level? Well, people are going to throw that at him. We think, it, we think he has. We think he's an exceptional coach with a wide range of international experience particularly. We think they make a good team. The one thing we do know is they are totally committed together to trying to turn things around here and we want to give them the opportunity and you know, we hope with, with everything, every breath we've got they succeed. There are newspaper articles out there this morning saying they were dressing room bust-ups and that one senior player went for, to, to coin a phrase, Ian, Ian Dowie at one stage this season. Was there serious unrest in your dressing room? Well, I'm not going to kind of comment on, any, on anything like that. I don't know. I don't know the situation in the dressing room. Of course, on the training field there are spats from time to time, but you could go to any premiership club, any club in the country, and that would happen. But that is not the principal reason. It's exactly as I've, as I've outlined it to you. You met the players this morning, what was their reaction? They're disappointed, obviously, because I think Ian was a very popular character. Um, I think we all liked Ian, you know, on a, on a personal level, but we have to take the personal from the business and we have to stand back and if we think there is a tough decision to be taken, then I can tell you that Richard and his directors are not going to shy away from that and they felt a tough decision needed to be taken and that's what they've done. However much we like the person, however much the players like the person, what we've got to do now is all pull together and get this club off the bottom of the table. You worked very closely with Ian Dowie on the legal side of things. We know about the ongoing court cases, which I know you can't talk about specifically, but mm. can you say, as a matter of fact, that Ian was fully concentrating on the football and that, that the court cases weren't distracting him? Well, the court cases are distracting both for Ian and for me. I mean, I work closely with Ian and everybody connected with the club, and obviously there is a huge amount. Nobody probably appreciates the volume of work associated with it, and yes, it's unsettling. Um, and you would have hoped it could have just been put to bed, but unfortunately it wasn't. Did it take his eye off the ball with the football, though? 
Um, I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't cite that as a reason for why this has happened, but it certainly would rather not have it than have it. Simon Jordan was talking about Ian Dowie last night. There's a, a history between the two clubs, obviously, and particularly between the two boards at the moment. What did you make of it when, within an hour of the news, Simon Jordan's talking publicly about Ian Dowie again? Well, I don't watch much children's television, so it's probably best not to comment. In terms of how you move on now, you've got eight points from 12 games. How much trouble are you in? No, we're in serious trouble and um, obviously I think anybody who knows the Premier League knows that you look at the fixtures and in truth when you're playing the Arsenals, Man United's, Chelsea's, it's difficult. It's difficult to get points, not that we haven't done it in the past but it's difficult. So you're looking for those games of like, like, like-minded like size like Wigan, like Reading this weekend to get your share of the points and um, that's where we've got to start winning games. It wasn't just the Wigan <clears> defeat that was the, the final straw on the camel's back, was it? No, it didn't. Obviously, it just cemented our position at the bottom of the table. You're not bottom just because you lose, you lose one game at Wigan. As I say, we've taken a very considered look at the situation and taken what we believe is the right decision in the interest of Charlton Athletic. How did Ian take the news? Uh, not very well, but then you wouldn't expect somebody to. That, you know, I'm sure he wanted to carry on here and, and complete the job. And I think we're all, we're all sad and disappointed with what's happened. Nobody wants this. We want you to be coming down praising us for being you know, in middle table or whatever we're doing. But it is disappointing, but I'm afraid you know, it is a results business as well. Was it ever an option that Alan Kirbishley would be talked to and on a list of potential candidates for you? I mean, he was linked with the job almost immediately yesterday. Yeah, I think Alan came out straight away, though, didn't he, and said that he didn't see going back as being an option and I think probably that's right from both sides perspective. In terms of the next three games as you, as you said there are clubs that are well around you in the table certainly of your stature in the table mm. how important is it that you go out and win at Reading and then string some decent results together very very quickly? Well I don't think just put all the people all the pressure on Reading obviously the boys here now got some work to do over the next few days and the players probably will be down for a couple of days so we've got to galvanise the players behind the, the new setup no other staff will be leaving here despite what was alluded to last night on Sky um, people will be staying, we've spoken to them all this morning, they all, they're all committed to staying here. But it's not just one game, but we have got to start improving results. OK, we wish you the best of luck with that, Peter Varney. Thank you very much indeed. That's the views then uh, on Sky Sports News this afternoon of the Charlton Athletic Chief Executive, Peter Varney. On the news that Ian Dowie has had his contract terminated at Charlton Athletic, Les Reed is the new head coach and he takes the club into battle this weekend against Reading. So Les Reed is in charge. Charlton's chief executive has just told us he'll be given a chance to prove he can handle being in charge at this level. The club's fans are undecided as to who they want to get the role on a permanent basis. I'd like to see probably Hoddle or McLeish, I think, would probably be my, be my two favourites. Someone with a bit of um, you know, proven premiership experience as well, rather than someone from the championship. Bring back Kerbishley, that's what I say. He says he doesn't want to come. Who would you like to see then? Uh, Peter Taylor. I'd like to see Peter Taylor have a go. Yeah, definitely. It'd lean Hoddle maybe a, a good chance. Um, who else other than that? I don't know. Uh, Jimmy Floyd isn't going to take over, is he? Well, Charlton travel to Reading on Saturday for their next Premiership game and whoever replaces Ian Dowie will then have to face Everton at the Valley, followed by a trip to Bramall Lane. Then it's Blackburn at home and a London derby with Tottenham before they entertain Liverpool on December the 16th. Well, keep your thoughts coming in regarding uh, Ian Dowie. If you've heard the uh, thoughts there of Peter Varney speaking with uh, Andy Burton just a few moments ago, uh, tell us what you think. Uh, do you trust uh, the board, as he said, that he wanted Charlton fans to do, to trust their decision-making uh, in getting rid of Ian Dowie? He said that the board felt this decision was in the best interest of the club. Do you agree uh, with that? He said it wasn't a panic measure. Give us your thoughts on what's developing at Charlton today. You to us at skysports.com. You can text us also on 84408. And uh, we'll read out as many as we can. Please include your name. The team news I've got for you is the Republic.